just one of many projects that we are funding um, because of our very strong interest in supporting Armenia um, to be a democratic, prosperous and resilient uh, country, making progress on human rights, democratisation and economic reforms. Um, and we think that a precondition, uh, or a very important element of achieving all of that is peace. Um, which is why we're supporting this project to encourage a dialogue on pathways towards peace and uh, conflict transformation and reconciliation. Uh, the conflict in Northern Ireland had been, uh, in Ireland, had been running for centuries. It was viewed as the most impenetrable conflict in Western Europe. And nobody thought that it could get sorted. So what happened in those 30 years of violent conflict from 1968 to 1998 when we signed our political agreement. What changed that saw the end of those slogans on those walls? And I'm just going to make four or five comments about how the character of the conflict changed because leaders made the character of the conflict change. So what were those elements? The first was that you had to change the language of conflict away from no surrender and Brits out. Because that was the road to nowhere. That was the road to more violence, more intransigence, more division. It took the change of language so that people began to change their thinking about what was the conflict really about and what was the most sustainable, uh, the most sustainable uh, remedy. Then a second thing happened, and that was that people began to change the process. People thought the way to resolve the conflict in Northern Ireland was actually to get the parties in Northern Ireland to sit down and work out. And we tried that time and time again in the 70s, the 1970s. We even at one stage got an agreement called Sunningdale, which collapsed within four months. And at the end of that period, somebody wrote in a foreign affairs magazine in America saying, actually, you can't rely upon the parties in our country, in Northern Ireland, to resolve the conflict. We have to change the process. And what they then began to argue was that if the parties and the people in Northern Ireland can't solve the problem, then let two governments who are responsible for Northern Ireland, the government of the ambassador in London and the government that I swear allegiance to in Dublin, um, the, uh, because I'm an Irish nationalist, I believe in Irish unity, and I um, uh, accept the United Kingdom, but have differences. But the people that say, it's two governments have to now resolve this. They said, they are the people who claim constitutional responsibility for Northern Ireland, so let them take the process forward. The two governments said, oh, we can't allow this violence to continue. We have to begin to change things. And they came up with an agreement between the two governments over the heads of the people of Northern Ireland. It wasn't, if you like, very democratic. But it was the two governments saying, we can't allow this to go on, let's get a grip on it. And from 1985 to 1998, that was the political agreement that governed, if you like, how Northern Ireland operated. I think when you're looking at um, the process of building peace, like conflict transformation, there's two, maybe two primary dimensions you're looking at. One is, what are the components of the piece? What, what are the details? Um, and the other is the process of, of how you got there. And in some respects, it's, the, the details are always going to be very contextual. They're very, going to be very contingent to, to the specific conflict area. Um, except that the UN has developed a series of principles um, relating to peace building, the key strands that you need to, key things you need to hit. And if you look at what happened in Northern Ireland, the components of the agreement, they very much hit all of those boxes. So I think there are some, some general things you can say about the sorts of things you need to hit, because what you're trying to do with a peace agreement is establish a peaceful and democratic society. So therefore there's certain components that you've got to think about, which is about democratically elected systems of governance. It is about principles of uh, rule of law uh, and uh, reduction in militarization. It is about um, issues around human rights 
and equality. It is about dealing with the victims and the internally displaced people and, and, and such like. So, but, but how you frame them in any one context will be, um, will be contingent and contextual. The other side of it is what I wanted to, to talk about really, was, was thinking about process. The process that you go to, to get, not just to get to an agreement, but also to build on the agreement to su su sustain the peace. So I, I want to focus on, on five strands of uh, process coming out of Northern Ireland that I think are you, you, the, the core elements you need to think about in any, in any process of peace building and transition. So the first thing I think is you know, that it, take, it does take a long time. Um, we think about the, the peace process in Northern Ireland, we reached an agreement in 98. The peace process on one level began in 1994, which is when the ceasefires were occurred, and that set in train three and a half years of political negotiation to reach an agreement. But to get to that stage, we already spent more than 20 years talking about how to build peace and what needs to be done. The problem was at those early stages, I think, which it kind of feeds into my, my second point around it, is that um, they, the earlier phases of attempts at peace building were partial. They were not as broadly as inclusive as they needed to be. And when we got to 98, that's about the time we got to maximum inclusiveness. So it was a series of stages that we went through as the actors involved in the peace building work, the peace process work, gradually increased. So we, had, we knew we had to talk to different people, we knew different people had to be involved in the process, but it took a period of time till everything lined up that we could effectively bring people into the process in a way that everybody accepted. And that took until 90, the late 1990s.